Thank you for downloading this Desenio podcast. For more information, visit DesenioDaily.com. We hope you enjoy the programme. Is curation restricted to museums and galleries, or could the discipline be extended into the wider public realm? In 2018, the Istanbul Design Biennial launched its fourth edition. Themed a school of schools, the biennial sought to tackle ways in which design and education might better support one another. One of the projects launched in Istanbul, in partnership with the British Council, was Tables, an ongoing series of dinners and discussions that explore new formats for curation. Led by Jana Schulze, a curator of contemporary design and associate professor at Kingston School of Art, Tables is an exploration of how critical discussion might exist outside of traditional gallery and museum settings. My name is Jana Scholze. I'm associate professor at Kingston University, where I'm running a course an MA in curating contemporary design. I'm also a curator for all my life. I'm someone who likes to kind of unpeel objects. So how objects speak to us, or whether they speak or not, it's a long discussion in curation, uh, which will never be answered. Um, is the, the interesting part in that is how do we use these objects, the space um, and all materials uh, around them uh, to to kind of give an experience, but also to really uh, tell a story that anyone can pick up. A current research project is a project that is called Tables, a School of Expanded Formats. Tables, a School of Expanded Formats, is a series of six curated events that investigate informal spaces of learning as a teaching tool in a very conventional format. And with tables, we try to use the informality of spaces and contexts to understand how differently we can work with people, how knowledge is exchanged, uh, transmitted, uh, can be provided, and how we can use this for, in the context of the Istanbul Design Biennale, for learning and education in general. I think definitely there is a, a, a huge need to bring cur- curating into spaces that are not necessarily museums and galleries, because despite what museums and galleries have done over the last 10, 20, 30 years, uh, in kind of providing more access, making it more easier to pe- people to come, widening their program tr- tremendously and using different formats in speaking to people. Um, there is still um, a huge public that feels like museums are not the places where they would kind of go to. And that is a question uh, that we have asked in curating for quite some years now, whether are we kind of uh, confined to the space of the museum or the gallery uh, to curate or can this practice happen everywhere? And I think uh, the the design and art practice, the work itself has made us very much aware that the place can, can be everywhere because also the work will happen everywhere. I'm Jan Sujurgen. Uh, I'm an architect and scholar based in Istanbul. Uh, I'm one of the learning creators of this uh, Tables Conversation. It's an informal environment where the people from different backgrounds, professionals, artists, creators, come together around the table, sharing conversations, sharing knowledge and sometimes food. And this creates a very particular environment for us to uh, having a chance to know each other and uh, create some maybe further collaborations. So creating such informal environments is quite important to get a real conversation between the people coming from different backgrounds. Most of the topics that were discussed in in the Tables events were connected to topics that the Istanbul Design Biennale kind of discussed. So in the first case, the speculative table we would have people, uh, curators, designers, uh, but also, for instance, the scientists, who had all something to do with climate change, is- issues around water and water scarcity. In the first event, um, we were gathered in a historical hammam in Istanbul. So it's such a, a powerful environment for us to think about the uh, scarcity of water 
um, the theme was um, is it possible to use speculation as a part of design education so the speculation about the this time's event was to think about the scarcity of water inside the hammam which is really powered by the water itself so there was some strict re- uh, regulations like uh, not being able to drink water till the end of the event and not being able to speak with other participants so it was like a really challenging experiment for us because you are getting thirsty and you want to share it with the people you just met so at the end of it people just go their ways without talking without sharing and it actually affects us deep inside but um, then we realize that it is probably better to talk and share the moment the second table the con- convivial table was connected to a conference that happened in the design museum that was connected to uh, Ivan Illich's book uh, Tools of Conviviality and the conviviality was uh, supported through a specific place in this uh, respect it was Wormer's Yard uh, which had this kind of this confusion of public pl- private space in it that people came and even stayed in in the buildings provided there and felt that all of a sudden they were at home. Uh, The dinner felt like more an invited dinner at home where the space actually wasn't uh, big enough and you had to kind of squeeze everyone in. And then the curator selected just uh, a set of rules that every participant on the table had to deal with. And these rules were very simple and were basically that you couldn't serve yourself, you had to serve your neighbor, uh, that was wine and food. But you also had to uh, get to know your neighbor so well that you had to introduce him to the whole table. And this kind of shaped the discussion a lot. And uh, very significantly, especially as the curator also kind of said, or just remarked at the end, please be reminded that you introduce the person, not the work. And of course, in a conference dinner, you are very uh, uh, used to speak about the work only. And it was the connection between the person and the work that became really interesting. In the third one, um, the event itself was again uh, realized in a particular place in Istanbul. It's a Crimean church, uh, an Anglican church uh, in the very center of uh, Istanbul. So uh, it was about... It was concentrating on the rituals in between the death and the life. So there was this kind of a mystic uh, environment um, proposed by Alexandra Midal. We were at the threshold of the church, just in between the garden and the inside of the church. So there was again a big table. And already in the way you had to come down a large staircase to find the the tables where you would sit on at the front porch of the, the, the church. And people were allowed to go inside, but also outside. And, and we noticed that people immediately calmed down just through uh, the environment. They even started just to whisper and or speak very, very quietly with each other. So these kind of changes in behavior allow or need a lot of preparation to make that happen, that people behave like this. They need very little guidance, ideally, to kind of sit down somewhere, feel comfortable, and let happen what will happen in experience. The way we learn in tables uh, about the events is uh, a reflection session that we run the day after the events, ideally the day after the events. And these reflection sessions have been tremendously important for us to discuss what really happened in the event and how we understand uh, the importance of the individual elements. So whether we need a table to sit around, uh, the first dinner in the hammam kind of had a kind, kind of tiny, tiny table and we were sitting more in a circle. And it seemed like there they needed to be something in the middle that kind of holds us together. The space, uh, the context seems to be extremely helpful if that is specifically chosen. So it can't just be in any office space. The events can't happen uh, in, in, ideally not in a teaching space. 
So it's for coming back to the question of school of schools and what this uh, means for for education is also to understand that we need to kind of go out of our school buildings, our teaching rooms, or the classroom, to understand what different uh, teaching can happen there. The Tables programme has already challenged a number of curatorial conventions and is now scheduled to continue its investigations. New events have already been planned, with further Tables discussions scheduled for autumn 2019 and spring 2020, curated by Kanzu Kurgan, El Ultima Grito and the Decorators. You've been listening to a Desenio podcast. For more podcasts, visit desenodaily.com.